So hi guys, let's have a look at Dehancer. Now this is a really nice little plugin that I've come across and this is a review on Dehancer. Now I'm obviously being um, recompensed for this so take it as a review but it is also a tutorial on using Dehancer um, to turn your photos into master art. So it's a review and a tutorial. So I hope you enjoy it. To begin, um, download and install Dehancer for Affinity Photo. You'll find it on, it's easy, Dehancer.com. Dehancer is a film profile system that enables you to apply a certain film type to the entire scene without a lot of fiddling around. It's not an LUT or a LUT or a series of um, things like that. It's a simple plugin. So if you want to follow along, Download and install the trial. Follow the detailed instructions contained in the install file that you'll find in the unzip folder. It's pretty straightforward, really. Make sure you have the right one for your system. There's the, the PC, the Mac, um, two types of Macs, the new, the new CPU and the Intel CPU. And you can download a trial version for free so you can get the feel for it. And if you like it, well, go right ahead. So let's take a look at some samples and see how you go about setting them to work on your film. This is a brilliant piece of software and makes your life so much easier. Now this image is from the stock studio, simple as that, in Affinity Photo. And I've applied the CineStill 800T profile to it. Now let's look at that process. And you can see there how it's applied. Load your stock photo into Affinity Photo. And you can see which one I've used there. Simple city scene that's um, right there in stock. I can't see which one I use. Yes, Pixabay. There it is. Easy in Pixabay so you can use the same scene if you like. Look at the layer and duplicate it then lock it. If you've had a photo from your own kit, make sure you rasterize it and, and lock it. So let's check our Dehancer tools. You can see in the Layers panel there, I've got the original background, it's locked, and the duplicate, unlocked, but selected. Now, with your Dehancer loaded and installed, you can go to Filters, Scroll down to Plugins, select Dehancer from the plugins, if you've got more than one, and then select Dehancer Film. Note, if the Dehancer Film tab is greyed out, you haven't rasterized your image. These only work with rasterized images. That's fairly normal, I should think. The interface comes up after a moment, presenting you with a multitude of options to select from. If you're new to film types, don't panic. Think of your favourite films and their look and feel. Film as in movie film has a really distinct look. Personally, I've spent a lot of time looking at the effects in movies and not following the storyline. But when done right, effects add to the story. Quentin Tarantino, for example, films often have a specific look that is hard to replicate. Filmed in 1984, Once Upon a Time in America has that 80s look that is now much emulated. So let's look at how we can get that Tarantino 80s look using Dehancer for Affinity Photo. Our Cityscape is loaded. We then loaded our Dehancer tools. There we are. Now Dehancer is loaded. Displaying the film types. I urge you to experiment with this preview pane. There are many, many film types you can select from just to get the look you want. You can use the presets as they are and you can even make adjustments to them in the sidebar if you wish. If you want to fine tune it. For now, I just want to use the CineStill 50D profile. This will give you a stronger film blue cast to the image. It enhances the cooler colours, but also enhances skin tones. 
And you can see, even just looking at that, there's quite a difference between those two images in the preview pane and the main image to the left. The CineStill 50 is selected. Not only does its profile show the image as a preview, if you apply it to the image, you can then switch the layer on and off to check the comparisons, because you've got the master just below it, remember? You can see the film effect in the preview pane now. Apply the front profile by clicking OK. Now, turn the new layer on and off. You'll clearly see the changes. Let's have a look at that so we can see it clearly. The video on the right is auto-playing, I hope you've noticed that. Background is selected and the scene turned off. And there's your original image. There's your scene turned back on again. And there's your adjusted image. Very nice. Let's try this with a singer, so we can see the subtle skin tone change. There we go, there's the original film on the left, and Cine Still 50D applied on the right. Now it's a very subtle change, you'll have to admit, but it is a change. If you look closely, you'll see there's quite a difference there, really. And it might be just what you want to bring up your series of shots. Remember, if you're on a shoot, you're probably using more than one image. And you want the same look and feel right across your photo shoot, I would think. And this is how you can easily do it. Let's use one more sample, straight from the stock studio again. We'll begin by putting it right there in the layer stack, leaving all the others turned off. Now I'll do a video capture of all the steps to modify it with Dehancer, so you can see it end to end. So the next sequence will be an end to end video grab. OK, let's have a quick look at uh, the whole process. Now I'm still using the same images as before. There's the cityscape and there's the guitar player down there. Yeah, and here I've loaded a detective. And these again are from um, let's see, characters, there we go, stock studio, fairly straightforward, just loaded it into the layers, there's the layers there, easy to do. Now what I'm going to do is change the colour tone of this image using Dehancer. I just want to show you how it works from start to finish. So we go up the top to filters, select filters, down to plugins, across to Dehancer. Now, why do you suppose that is? It's greyed out. I'll show you that. That's because it's an image. Now, an image won't work, so we have to right click on it, go down here and rasterize the image. Now you can see it's pixel. So let's go over here. We're on the image again up to Filters, Plugin, Dehancer, oh, and there it is. Let's have a look. Just clicked on Dehancer, and give it a moment on here, and up will come the Dehancer interface. Now, it comes with a whole bunch of presets and profiles. Now, I haven't made any presets. I've got one favourite I've put in there, Add Selected Film to Favourites. Now, I used the ADOX color implosion, but what I want to do is look down the list. Now, this is all we've got in there at the moment under all films, but all films is a huge list. I'll just scroll down here 
Now you can see a tiny little preview of the image that we've got over there and how it will change according to the different um, cinema film. Fuji Chrome. Fuji Chrome one's very nice. Changes the skin tones. Now let's scroll down here. There are so many of them. Now that one there, Fuji Film Instax, I like that one because that's very, hmm, very 70s, if you remember all those uh, detectives. Okay, let's try the Fuji Film Instax ones. Instax. And there it is. Now, you can see on the left hand side here, it hasn't changed that one, but it's showing me a preview in there. Now, that's pretty much like I'd like, actually. You can go over here, you can change it. I won't do that at the moment because this isn't a whole. You can change the temperature, you can expand it. Kodak Endura glossy pipe, color head, film grain. Halation, you can you can reset the halation if you like. So anything that you've got in the left hand side, you can change in the right hand side. Now let's just get back to the source. Okay. Now I'll scroll down here a little bit. You can see there's some that are almost black and white, and well, some that are black and white. Now there's a Kodak Ektachrome E100 that is slightly paler. Than the one we've got, which has a fair blue cast to it. Let's try one without the blue cast. Remember, we're looking at the original on the left hand side and the preview just there. There we go. Yeah, the tones in the in the man's face are a little different. Kodak, Kodak. And see, that's got a bluish cast to it. That's got a bluish cast. Or is that just my eyes? However, I'll just leave it like it is at the moment because if you can see here, the film type, you've got all films and there's motion picture ones here. This will, this will pick out just the ones that we're looking for that contain motion picture film. Now that one there is motion picture. That one there is motion picture. But that's and that's for that film. There's a few different ones there. That's the one we're on. That one there. Change it to that. That's changed him. What I'm trying to get is to go back to the Kodak. Vision 3, 200T, there we go. Now there's a nice tone. That's browned his skin down a little bit. You can see there, particularly around the nose area and the cheekbones, slightly reddish there in the original image. And that one we've got there. Now, that's really all there is to it. You can wander through these at will. Of course, there are so many of them and you can alter them. I could probably, I don't want to brown that off too much, but with a Panama hat on, he's probably somewhere where there's a lot of sun. The person in the background, I'm not too worried about at the moment. Now, if that's what we want, we've got the preview on and we just click OK. And there it is, you saw it change. Now, if you want a quick view of what it looks like, just turn that layer off at the moment. There he is. Turn it back on. There he is. Turn it back off. Now let me move him down. Why is that not moving? Oh, because it's locked, of course. Silly me. There we go. Turn him back on. And bring him down to there. There we go.
Let's unlock that. Moving the wrong image again. I'll get this right eventually, won't I? There we go. He's sitting nicely there. Now we'll do the same with this one. And that's how we want that one. That's a nicer image, that one. The colour tone's nice in that. Yes, he's very, very pale there. And that's better. Now that's what we want. And you can see I haven't destroyed the original. That's still there. Now, that's all we want with that one. You can export that. And you've got a nice toned image there. Or you can... Uh, do what you like with that. You could put flares in it, you could put text over the top, and you could do all sorts of things. Very nice. So that's the end of this little video clip, and we'll continue on. That's a good example of how to use it. One more time. Rasterize your layer. Rasterize your image. Go up to Filters. Select Plugins. Select Dehancer and Dehancer Film. Give it a moment to come up, and there it is. Now I've got all films, and out of that I've selected the color implosion, or if you want to narrow it down, favorites, color negatives, motion picture, color positives, black and white, instant films, exotic films, and cross. But that's not what I'm after at the moment. So let's just cancel all that, and we'll end this part right there. Finally, I'd like to talk about the actual content of the package. The tools that you can use to turn otherwise ordinary images into gems. First and foremost are the film profiles. Dozens of photographic and movie films updated in one click inside the plugin. Eastman Double X522 through to Kodak Color Plus 200 negative film. Very powerful. Realistic film grain simulation with adjustable size, amount of impact, and impact with separate controls in shadows, mid tones, and highlights. Using the Dehancer plugin ADOX Color Implosion 100 in the image you can see there. And you can see on the right hand side the adjustments you've got for the film grain section. Use the bloom effect with flexible controls to bring misty glow and soft vintage feel, turning lifeless digital pictures into works of art. And of course we've looked at this one, but this one's slightly different. Halation film emulsion effect. Visible as a subtle red glow around bright light sources, speculate highlights and contrasting edges. Very subtle in this image, but adding value to the image. Now in summary, there's a whole list of things there and you can pause the film and read through these and there's more than this, but this is a quick summary of what's in Dehancer. The final verdict, it's a very easy plugin to use. There's enough built-in film types to satisfy all but the most discerning of photographers and this plugin will certainly fill the needs of most photographers and designers. I would say the pros, it's easy to use, comprehensive set of tools and well supported. The cons, well I've already had some feedback, it's somewhat on the pricey side for consideration by non-professionals. But it's a one-off price and not subscription, and I guess if you're going to use it all the time and you use it a lot, then it's not that much. A few cents a day. So thanks for watching. I hope you've gained some ideas and insights for creating your own work in Affinity Photo and using Dehancer for Affinity Photo. Please share the video with friends if you like the idea. I'm sure they'll appreciate it.